Cells are the fundamental building blocks of life and are able to specialize and adapt to the roles they perform. Every living organism on Earth is made up of cells, from unusual shapes and sizes to those you'll want to avoid at all costs. Let's take a look at 15 strange-looking cells. Number 15. Bubble Algae Amazingly, there are 37 trillion cells in a human and 5 million in a fly. But just because most cells are microscopic, it doesn't mean that all of them are. In fact, there are some organisms that are made up of just one cell, and some of them can grow much larger than you'd ever expect. One of the biggest single-cell organisms of all is called bubble algae, which is a bizarre type of plant that's native to tropical and subtropical waters around the world. They're commonly seen off the coast of Australia, and in some instances have been known to grow to 3.5 inches or 9 centimeters in diameter. Because of the way they appear to be perfectly spherical and their green coloration, they're often called sailor's eyeballs, because that's exactly what they look like as they roll around the seabed. What's clever about the structure of the bubble algae is that inside the cell there's actually a number of different nuclei and other structures, which means that it contains the parts of hundreds or thousands of cells, but doesn't replicate any cell walls, so technically counts as being just one. If you ever find a bubble algae in an aquarium, though, it can become a real problem. If it pops in the water, lots more will form from its constituent parts, so the only way to be rid of them is to carefully remove them and dispose of them. Number 14. Streptomyces We've all noticed that smell in the air after it's been raining, and think of it as the scent of dirt or mud, but what you're actually sensing is the aroma of a type of bacteria that lives in the ground, called Streptomyces. Those that live in the soil produce a substance called geosmin, and it's this that we associate to be the smell of mud. Because of the bacteria, it's high in concentrations in vegetables like beetroot, and is also why fish and water may sometimes have an earthy flavor to them. We are extremely sensitive to the presence of geosmin, something that's thought to have evolved because it alerts us to the potential presence of fertile soil and water. This bacteria is perfectly adapted to thriving around vegetation and forms long filaments as part of a larger colony that collectively filter the environment for nutrients. There are actually more than 500 different known species of Streptomyces, and they're the most common type of bacteria that are used in the production of antibacterial, antifungal, and antiparasitic compounds. Streptomyces also provide a number of benefits to certain animals, too, with some species of fungus farming ants and beetles being known to cultivate the bacteria around their food stores in order to protect their supplies from other invaders. Number 13. T-Cells The way that the different cells of the body work together to keep us fit and healthy is almost unbelievable. One of the cleverest and unusual looking of all are T cells. They make up part of what we call the white blood cells and are instrumental in our immune system because it's these that form the basis of our adaptive immune response. There are at least seven types of T cell, each of which has the same basic structure but behaves in a slightly different way. They're essentially the security guards of the body and monitor for the presence of problematic cells or unwanted viruses, whether they're free-floating and looking for a cell to infect, or even if they've already taken hold inside a cell. It is particularly impressive that T-cells are able to tell the difference between a normal healthy cell and one that's infected or malfunctioning, and it's all to do with the detection of and the way the nodes and the surface of the T-cell interact with various chemicals that healthy cells produce. If these are present, the T-cell will ignore the cell, but if there's no trace, the T-cell will instead activate the immune response, which will result in the target cell being destroyed. Number 12. Listeria monocytogenes Listeria is a species of bacteria that can thrive just about anywhere, but when the unassuming infection finds its way into an animal cell, it transforms itself into something spectacular and equally as uncomfortable. It is one of the fastest spreading foodborne pathogens of all, and will often develop in meat, raw milk, or soft cheeses, even when they're being kept in the refrigerator. Ingesting it can lead to food poisoning with flu-like symptoms, but it's also thought to be responsible for 260 deaths per year in the United States alone, because it's particularly risky for people with medical conditions. What's also clever about Listeria is that despite looking uninteresting to begin with, it starts to transform itself once it's entered a target cell. It begins to harvest parts of the cell called actin and use this to build a protective layer around itself and eventually a tail-like structure behind it. It uses this tail to propel itself around inside the host cell and begins to look like a comet moving around with a tail following it. 
Eventually, it will find the cell wall and push so hard against it that it will begin to protrude. And when another cell comes along and tries to eat the protrusion, the listeria then finds itself in a new place where it can start causing its destruction. Number 11. Neurons Neurons are some of the most important parts of the anatomy of any living thing, because not only are they present inside the brain and responsible for sending signals, but they also perform the same role throughout the entire central nervous system. Made up of a central core where the cell body, with its nucleus, can be found, neurons also have long extensions called dendrites and a long fibrous strand called an axon, which itself can be several feet or up to a meter long in humans. At the end of the axon are axon terminals, and it's through these that signals can pass. There are actually three distinct types of neurons, and although they share the same basic structure, they're responsible for different operations. Sensory neurons are the ones that react when the sensory organs detect a stimulus, such as light in the eyes, and they send a signal to the brain where the appropriate response is decided upon. Motor neurons work in the opposite way, in that they receive signals from the brain or the spinal cord and are responsible for triggering an action, such as activating a muscle or changing neurotransmitter production with an organ. The third type are called interneurons, and these are the ones that connect other neurons to each other in the same region and form groups that are called neural circuits. Number 10. Smooth Muscle Our bodies contain different types of muscle that are used in different situations, but the ones that have the strangest looking cells within them are smooth muscles. These are the types of muscle that you'll find in the walls of hollow organs such as your stomach or intestines as well as around the body's passageways, like the blood and lymph vessels. Normally, a smooth muscle either fully contracts or relaxes as a whole, and it's much more elastic than other types of muscle. The cells that make up smooth muscles are called myocytes, and these are spindle-shaped, where they're wider at the middle and taper off towards each end. Each of these cells can actually act as a muscle in their own right, and can either tense or relax, and are able to change state surprisingly quickly. It's their fast response that makes these cells ideal for being responsible for changing the size of the iris in an eye, for example, as well as being the ones that can make your hair stand on end when you're cold or afraid. Number 9. Flavivirus There's long been a debate between biologists about whether a virus actually counts as being a shell or a living organism. Some, though, like the flavivirus, creates what's known as a capsid which is essentially a protein shell that forms around the genetic material of the virus and in effect acts just like a cell. Flavivirists are of interest to researchers, not just because they're made up of an intricate pattern of starfish-like shapes, but because they can cause a range of nasty diseases in humans, for example, yellow fever, the West Nile virus, and the Zika virus. The main way in which they're transmitted between animals and people is through the bite of a mosquito or a tick, and once the cells are in the body, they begin to mimic cells that should be there. It's not known for certain how they manage to gain entry into the actual cells of the body, but once they do, they release their genetic material which begins to replicate in the cytoplasm of the host cell. Once the viral material is present in a large enough quantity, it's then able to work its way out of the cell so the whole process can begin again. It is so effective that it begins to severely inhibit normal cell activity within days of an infection, and in serious cases will often lead to a life-threatening swelling of the brain because of the acute impact it has on neurons. Number 8. Colobacter crescentis The strange-shaped Colobacter crescentis is a type of bacteria that's commonly found in freshwater lakes and streams. And once you know the environment that they thrive in, then their peculiar appearance begins to make more sense. Even on a microscopic level, the water's current can be too powerful to continually swim against, so this bacteria has developed a novel method of counteracting it. The bacteria is able to swim around by using its flagellum, which acts as a spinning tail to propel itself. But once it's found somewhere it wants to stay, it'll drop its flagellum and grow a stalk instead. On the tip of this stalk, it develops a hold fast, which produces sticky sugars to hold it in place. Researchers have found these sugars to be some of the stickiest substances in nature, which require the equivalent force of 5 tons per square inch to pull free. The stickiness of the stalk is also very helpful in catching nutrients from the water for the bacteria to feed on, and because of this it can survive in relatively nutrient-poor regions that other life forms would struggle to cope with. Once it has enough energy, it'll begin to procreate by splitting in half, and the half that isn't attached to the stalk will be released into the water to find a new place to stick onto. Number 7. Bone Cells 
When you think of bones, it's probably the large solid objects within the body that form the skeleton and structure that come to mind. But even they are made up of three different types of cells that perform different and vital roles. Osteoclasts are the least common and the largest of the bone cells and are responsible for breaking down the bone material to release the nutrients into the bloodstream. They actually originate in the liver and spleen as stem cells, but by the time they attach to a bone, they develop ruffled borders that allow them to maintain the outer edges of the bones. Osteoblasts, on the other hand, are the main building blocks of the bone, and once they're in place, begin producing a substance called osteoid, which mineralizes to give the bone its hard structure. They also produce hormones that act on the bone to keep it healthy, and are vital to the way the bones heal themselves. Osteoblasts fit into gaps and build up bone material around themselves, and once they're fully covered, they turn into the third type of bone cell, osteocytes, which both maintain and hold the bone tissue together. Number 6. Magnetosporulum Magneticum When we want to navigate around our world, we usually use our vision and sense of hearing to determine where it is we want to go and to be aware of obstacles in our way. Single-celled organisms, however, don't have the luxury of sight or sound and have to use other methods instead. One of the most ingenious is the type used by a bacteria called Magnetosporulum Magneticum, which uses magnetic forces to guide itself. It's a type of bacteria that lives in water, and because of the specific corkscrew shape of the cell, can align with the Earth's magnetic field. The main need for this bacteria is a region where oxygen is present, but not too much, and they collect small iron particles from the environment to make them more responsive to magnetism. By orienting themselves north to south, they can then chart a coherent route through the environment to find the optimal conditions in a way that's far more effective than simply wandering around aimlessly. Of course, this also means that in laboratory settings, electromagnetic fields can be used to trick the bacteria into moving in any direction, and you can guide them around in a way that's almost like playing a video game. Number 5. Exocrine Asinar The pancreas is a surprisingly important organ in the body because it's responsible for the production of a range of different hormones that are used to regulate bodily functions, and is essentially two different organs mixed into one. One of its functions is endocrine, which means that it manages the blood sugar levels, and the other function is exocrine, which has to do with digestion. The exocrine acinar cells are ones that form on the outer edge of the pancreas and are connected to a series of ducts that they release digestive enzymes into. Through these ducts, the enzymes travel to the first part of the small bowel, where it starts to break down food to release the nutrients. Without this, the digestive system won't be anywhere near as effective, and this is why medical issues with the pancreas can have far-ranging consequences for the rest of the body. The acinar cells are so named because of their berry-like appearance, made up of a glandular portion and a duct portion. The gland part is tubular, and the duct is the part that looks like the tip of the berry. It's there that the hormones are produced and released from, and these types of cells can actually be found all over the body, such as in the lungs and even in the mouth, where they produce saliva. Number 4. Deinococcus radiodurans Of all the types of bacteria that have so far been discovered, the Deinococcus radiodurans is renowned for being by far the toughest. It was first discovered in the 1950s when researchers were investigating new ways of disinfecting tinned meat and found that even after irradiating several cans, one of them still spoiled. Inside, Deinococcus radiodurans had thrived, and it was later found that not only could it withstand radiation, but it can handle more than 5,000 times the fatal dose for humans. Beyond this, it can also withstand extreme temperatures and immersion in concentrated acid, and NASA recently revealed that it was able to survive for three years in the vacuum of space. The reason for this hardiness has a lot to do with the structure of the bacterium. They are spherical and relatively large, and it's normal for four cells to stick together to form a tetrad. This provides the cells with extra protection on most sides and tends to focus more effort on developing a thicker wall along the exposed edge. When they're in a nutrient-rich environment, they use oxygen to produce energy from organic compounds, but when nutrients or oxygen aren't available, they enter a state of stasis to protect themselves until it's safe again. And this process is what allows them to endure virtually any extreme condition they're ever exposed to. Number 3. Ebola Virus Of all the viruses that we know so far about, Ebola is one of the most dangerous and is easily transmitted. As with other viruses, there is debate around whether the constituent parts actually count as being a cell, because they lack most of the structures that would be expected from one. 
but what they do have is a long molecule of RNA, which is essentially half a strand of DNA, which is surrounded by a protected protein layer called a capsid. There are actually five different known forms of the Ebola virus, four of which affect humans, and each of which acts in slightly different ways on the body. Ebola can be transmitted between people by contact with the body fluids of an infected person or an animal, which in most cases is by being exposed to blood. Once the virus makes its way into the host's body, it then begins to seek out vulnerable cells and attaches to certain surface receptors like the C-type lectins, and then begins to fuse itself with the cell membrane. It's then able to release its RNA into the cell where it reproduces, and these replicas make their way out of the host cell in search of others to infect. Because of the way it affects the body, it takes a few days or weeks for someone who's been infected with Ebola to start showing the initial symptoms, which include a fever, sore throat, muscle pain, and headaches. Soon though, rashes, diarrhea, and vomiting will happen frequently, as will a reduced function of the liver and kidneys. On average, around 50% of people infected with Ebola will ultimately end up dying from it, with the main cause of death being the result of fluid loss. In many ways, it's hard to believe that something so small that looks like a couple of strands of hair can be so dangerous, and it's no wonder that whenever an outbreak is detected, every effort is made to quarantine the area to ensure it doesn't spread any further. Number 2. Microglia Of all the structures in the human body, the brain is arguably the most important. It's from there that commands are sent through the central nervous system to ensure everything else is working properly. So in an effort to ensure the brain itself remains healthy, it has a special type of immune cell that's not found anywhere else. Known as microglia, they actually make up around 10% of the total number of cells in the brain. In their resting state, they look almost tree-shaped, but once they're activated, something happens if bacteria or even a pile of garbage protein is detected. They turn into fat blobs so they can consume any material that shouldn't be there. Amazingly, to perform this role, they are some of the most active cells in the brain and use their branches to connect with other cells so they know immediately if something's not right. It's only relatively recently that they've begun to become more fully understood, and their importance reaches far beyond simply preventing disease. They're also believed to be the gardeners of the brain and play a particularly crucial role at the start and end of life. As well as consuming pathogens, they also remove inactive synapses, which are the connections between the neurons. This is crucial to the development of memories, and because microglia have been found to get larger and slower in later life, can also explain why it becomes more difficult to form long-lasting memories as you get older. Number 1. The Black Death Of all the plagues and viruses that have ever spread around the world, the Black Death was arguably the most devastating, having killed between 75 and 200 million people across Eurasia and Africa in the 12th century. One of the problems people faced was their lack of understanding of microbiology, so to begin with they had no idea how to stop its spread. Originally thought to be spread by rats and then by fleas on the rats, we now know that the deadly disease was actually the result of an infection by the Yersinia pestis bacteria. The cell shape of the bacteria itself is a strange fat tube with tendrils that hang off of it that allow it to bind to cells within the body. After the first pandemic of the plague, it continued to spread around the world a number of times over the following centuries and caused havoc every time that it did. It was only with the introduction of more hygienic living conditions that it became less of a concern, but it still to this day re-emerges occasionally in particularly susceptible regions. What's quite concerning about the cell structure of this bacteria is that researchers have managed to determine what Yersinia pestis looked like during the first pandemic of the plague, and have found that the variants that are present today have evolved considerably. It's quite possible that it could develop resistance to the medications that are used to treat it, or to make it even more virulent. And if that happens, we could well be facing a new plague that's almost unstoppable. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.